My name is Christian Couder, and I'm going to talk about Git and testing. As you know, Git is a distributed version control system. It was created by Linus Torvalds in April 2005, and it has been maintained by Junior Hamano since July 2005. And it's now the most popular version control system. Um, I started working on it in 2006 on my free time. I worked especially on Git Bisect. And now, since last year, I've been working as an independent consultant and developer for Booking.com, GitLab, and Protocol Labs. So for Booking.com and GitLab, I'm working on Git. But for Protocol Labs, I'm working on something called IPFS. Are there some people who know IPFS? Yeah, very, very few people. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it because um, my talk is about how I used Git testing features or Git related testing features to develop IPFS and also how to how it's used to develop Git itself. So IPFS is uh, called the permanent web. It's a content addressed protocol uh, that is a little bit like HTTP, but it has some features from Git and BitTorrent too. And it's alpha software written in uh, Go. And uh, like Git, it has a common line interface. And uh, what it means, so Git is also content addressed, which means that you retrieve some content using a hash of the content. Uh, the web, well, HTTP currently is not, is location addressed because a name like example.com is transla translated into an IP address, which is a location. Um, in IPFS, uh, a name like example.com is translated into a hash of some content, and, um, and then the protocol try to retrieve the content from wherever it can find it. So when I started working on IPFS, there were only unit tests, no, no black box tests, and it was under heavy development, and there were a lot of regressions because each developer was working only on its part, on his part, and he was, and uh, they were, they were basically improving their own part of the code, but they were breaking things for other all the time. Um, so it really needed black box tests. So as I knew Git, I decided to use the Git framework, the Git test framework, to to test uh, IPFS as a black box. Uh, the the t Git test framework was developed by Junior Hamano it's himself um, in May 2005, so just one month after Git started. And it's developed in Shell, and um, it was extracted from Git five years ago by Matthias Lafeld into a project called Charness. And in my opinion, it's one of the main reasons why Git has always been very stable. It's because it's really comprehensive and, uh, and testing many things. So how, how do you test using Charness? Well, you first, as it's a shell script, you have the usual uh, hash bank stuff, then you give it a, tit a title with a, here, Charness example. You source the Charness library. And then you have, you have 
um, things like test expect success or test, test expect failure for each test you want to run. And so each, of, each test has a, a, a name and it has commands like this one that are linked together using double ampersands. So if this way, if any of those commands fail, the test will fail. And then at the end, you have to use test done. And you can run it like this. Um, yeah, so maybe we can see an example. Oops. Yeah. Um, no, not here. Oops. So it looks like this, and you, as it's a regular shell script, you can just run it like this. Uh, I could add other tests, like I will just. So I, I added another test at the end. So now if I run it again, there, there are two tests. And um, it has some really nice features, like, for example, prerequisites, uh, because you, sometimes you only want to run tests when, when some conditions are satisfied. For example, you can have some expensive tests that run for a long time that you want to run only sometimes. And also, at the end, there is a, and when you run all the tests, you can aggregate all the results of, the, of all the tests you, you launched like this. So here, you can see that um, most of the tests succeeded. Uh, no one failed, but there are some broken. Some broken means that they are expected to fail, actually, and some fixed means that they were expected to fail, but they succeeded. Because, um, yeah, as I said, there is, you, ca you can use text, test expect failure when you expect a test to fail because uh, of some bugs or some features that has not already been implemented. Um, yeah, so these are all the features, well, some of the features of, of Sharness. So it's really easily ex extensible. And you can use verbose output. For example, here, I just need to pass it minus V, and I get a more detailed uh, output. You can also have it fail immediately if one test fail. And you can use test pose inside, inside your your test scripts so that it will stop there and you can debug what's going on. And also, as its output is in the test anything protocol, you can use many things, um, many tools. For example, there is a tool called Prove. Yeah, it's basically the same output, but I don't know if you know about, who knows about the test anything protocol? Yeah, a few people, okay. Well, I think it's interesting that it's in a standard output. Um, so now these days, uh, IPFS has 58 test scripts, which means around nearly 800 tests. And they are run automatically on each commit of each pull request. Well, at least that's the idea. I think we had it running like this for some time, but 
we are using GitHub and the, the tools like Travis and Circle CI that we are using don't make it really easy to run uh, the, all the tests on each commit. But the, we used some workarounds, and we I think we are, we will do better soon. And yeah, we we don't run the test on on Windows right now, but we have we are working on it. And um, what? What's interesting and from this experience, and I think many people in the Git community and, uh, and especially, uh, and also maybe the Linux community, had this kind of experience is that it's really good to have some black box tests, not just unit tests, and also Breaking backward compatibility is is uh, really bad for even for pro alpha software because you you break expectations for for your users for your testers and uh, yeah it it has been very painful um, so regression still happen sometimes if because tests cannot cover everything. So uh, for this, we use Git bisect. And uh, so I will talk about Git bisect. And to, to check that it, each commit must uh, pass all the tests, we used things like this. So I don't know if someone knows what this does. So I, I will show you um, maybe right now. Um, yeah. So um, so. Yeah, let, let's try to do that. So it's a, a bit more complex than the, what is on the slide. So um, yeah, let's let's see what this does. So if you know the interactive rebase, git git rebase minus i, uh, it gives you something like this, where usually you have only peak at the beginning of each of the first lines. And here, after each peak line, you have an exec line. So what this will do is that Git will uh, cherry pick the first commit and then execute the, the, the bash command. But uh, yeah, so. Let's let's go back to the yeah I, I can just run it for now so if I s just save this you see that it's running the um, it's running the make command here because it's rebuilding Git after the, uh, having pick, cherry picked the first commit. So I will go back to this later. Now let's have a look at git bisect. As you know, git commits uh, form a directed acyclic graph. So that, that can be shown like this. So the history direction is from left to right. So commits are, are pointing to their parents. And you can see that some of them have, have many parents because they are merge commits. And the idea behind Git bisect, by the way, how many have been using Git bisect already? Yeah, a lot, a lot, that's nice. 
So the idea behind Git bisect is to find the first bad commit, what, what we call the first bad commit, which is the commit that introduces a behavior that is usually a bug or a regression. And uh, as you can see, all the, all the commits that are descendants from the first bad commit have also this bug, let's say. So, um, yeah, and we are using a binary search algorithm for efficiency. And the benefits, if we find the first bad commit, is that it's much easier to check what happened in the, commit, in the first bad commit instead of all the whole source code. Because usually, commits are quite small. Well, they should be. And, um, yeah. and the commit also gives extra information, like commit message, author, date, and so on. So you can start it. There are two ways. So you can just say git bisect start, and then give the bad commit after git bisect bad, and the, or, and the good commit after git bisect good. Or you can just say git bisect start, and then give the bad commit and the good commit. So because, well, most of the time you know where in, on which commit it failed and which commit it was good. So after you do that, for example, like this, uh, it, it tells you <laughs> that there are some revisions left to test and some, a number of steps. And it checks out automatically a commit that you have to test. So then you test this commit, and you say whether it's bad or good, using git basic bad or git basic good. And it checks out another one, and so on until you, until uh, you find the first bad commit. So here it was a, a toy example where I just tried to find the first commit that uh, intro, yeah, that, that um, introduced the 26 in the version number. And so when the first bad commit is found, so you can take a look at it and uh, play with it. And after that, you have to use git bisect reset to go back to the branch from where you started. And um, the other way to bisect, so th previously, this was the manual way to bisect. You had to say to test each commit that git had checked out, and then say whether it was bad or good. But you can just use git bisect run and give it a script that will um, be used to check each commit. So for example, if you are bisecting a broken build, you can just say git bisect run make, and it will run make automatically at each commit to say whether it's good or bad. And um, for example, with the the previous example, the previous toy example, um, I I used so git bisect start with those two versions, the bad one and the good one, and then git bisect run with this command. So it it grabbed the it grabs the make file to find to say whether sub level equals 25 can be found in it. So as you can see, it tells you that which command it is running, then which commit is checked out, and so on, automatically. And you find the, in the end, you find the same first bad commit. So how does it know uh, after running each uh, run command, whether the commit is good or bad, it's with the exit code of the command. 
So when it's zero, it means good. Uh, and uh, most of the exit numbers from 1 to 127, except 125, are, are bad. 125 means that the current commit cannot be tested. And uh, the other exit possible exit numbers are, con are considered uh, really bad so that it, it should, bisection should be stopped immediately. Um, so why it, uh, are those kind of, are those different kind of uh, exit code useful? Well, especially the skip one. It's because uh, sometimes you have a lot of uh, untestable commits. For example, what happened in IPFS development is that some people started to work on, a, on a something. And what they did is that they, they created their own branch. They started to develop. They committed, then started, then developed a little bit more, committed, and so on. And after some time, they decided to check whether it compiles or not. And unfortunately, it didn't compile. So what they did is that they just fixed the, um, the breakage, and then they committed, and then they sent the pull requests. And uh, so, of course, this is bad because um, if, the, if the pull request is merged as this, and this was the case at the beginning, then you end up with a lot of commits that just don't compile. So, so you cannot test them. Um, so in, in this case, git bisect tells you something like this. Um, yeah. But it's not pretty, so <laughs> because you really don't know what happened. So there are ways around it, like you could uh, ap apply a patch automatically or not before each test so that you fix the compile the, the build, and, uh, and then you can test. Or you can just create a branch where all the c compile errors are fixed, which is usually quite easy because if this commits, commit fixed the um, compile problem, then you can just perhaps squash it with the commit that introduced the, the compile problem here. So you get a, a, a fixed up branch like this, and you can bisect on this branch. Um, and there is even something called git replace that I worked on. And this is a way to, to tell the, the history that um, it should not go this way, but this way. So this, this is kind of a hack, but if you are interested, you can take a look. So now let's have a look at um, some demos again, because I think that's probably quite well, yeah, the, um, interesting. So here, I just... Um, Um, yeah, it's it's not really. Um, so, yeah, let's start with, for example, some tests we we wrote. For um, I will show some features. So that's the IPFS repo, and uh, there are a bunch of tests, of Sharnas tests, yeah. 
you cannot see it very well here because um, I had to. So these are all the the test files. Let's look at one. So what you can see here is. Um, Oops. So here you can see some tests with the, a prerequisite, and if I launch, if I launch this, oops, um, oops. Yeah, there, there are some failures, so I will um, I will just uh, yeah. It's because some some tests are using Fuse, and uh, there is some problem on my computer with Fuse. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so I had something for that. So here I will just export this environment variable and run again. And you can see that now that the fuse tests are in blue, so they are not executed. Here, you can see that some tests even have two prerequisites, expensive and fuse. And um, if I want to run the expensive tests, I just need to append this, for example. And and now it's only the fuse tests are not executed, are script, skipped. And it takes a lot of time because here we are generating a 100 megabyte file. So, so I'm, I will not, I will stop it now. Um, so running the tests are, is very simple. You just have to to run make, for example, like this. It builds the binary first if it has not been built, and then it will run some tests like, like this. So this is the same way as Git is is working. If you in Git, the test directory is called T. So here you just, uh, yeah, it runs tests also. And you can see there are some that are also not run automatically. Um, yeah, one interesting thing is to show Git bisect run. So I will. I will show you. Um, yeah. So here there are ten commits. Each it's uh, an example repository with ten commits. Each one has had um, just one line in a foo dot txt file, so it's pretty simple. I used the, um, this small for loop to create these commits. And now, um, let's say that I 
I want to find, so uh, if you want to find which commit introduced some test, some text in, in some uh, files, there are other, way, other ways to do it. You can use git log minus big S, for example, and uh, I will show you. So, so this shows that the commit that introduced um, eight, yeah, I should have uh, done it like this with the file name, but it's the same. Here there is only one file, so. Uh, so it is uh, foo.txt, yeah, if you want something a bit more verbose like this, this will. But it's a good way um, to test git bisect. So I will just use, um, so I will, I will find, I will say that the, the, the bad commit is the current one, the tenth commit, and the, the good one is the, I don't know if you know this kind of notations. Yeah, uh, so this means that it's the seventh commit before head um, among the first parents. So, so if you just do that, it will check out one commit in between, and then you can, uh, yeah, for, first you need a test script, so I will, uh, just so <laughs> this is a very simple test script. It just uh, grabs for eight in the foo.txt, and if it's found, we we consider this is bad, so we just say use false here. And uh, when you actually run it. you see that it finds the, the, the same line, the same commit with, uh, that introduced the, the eight in, uh, in it. So you can see the, the detail. <laughs> it's not so, so interesting because it's very small, but. And after that, for example, you can do git uh, bisect reset Up, and you go back to to where you from where you started um, so So uh, my GitHub uh, name is Chris Cool, and I became the Sharness maintainer a few months ago because Matthias Lafelt, who had uh, created it, was not really interested in uh, in maintaining it anymore. And uh, I also created something called Sharnessify which is a shell script that helps uh, creating, installing Sharness um, to, into your, your code because it's not, well, the process is not really difficult, but I did, IPFS is made of a, a big number of different repositories and after I did it, for a few of them, I, I just scripted it to, <laughs> to avoid doing this kind of repetitive uh, tasks. So of course, you know the git um, uh, main URL. I, I also um, maintain 
Well, yeah, I, I'm also an editor of um, a, news, a Git newsletter called Git Rev News. So um, if you go to this site, I forgot to add it, and you click to Git Rev News. Oh, well, let's see the archives. So you see a lot of, uh, so there is one edition per month, and you can find articles and many other things about Git development. And um, yeah, there are also developer interviews. So for example, this is one guy working for Autodesk to, to improve uh, Git, uh, Git LFS uh, on the Git side and other clean and smudge, smudge filters. I, if you, for those of you who saw uh, Tim's presentation this morning, if you are interested. And there are also news about releases and, uh, and about tools and, uh, and many other things. So here, yeah. and I'm doing this with uh, Thomas Ferris Nicolaisen and with help from people from the Git <coughs> development community. And um, that's pretty much it. I hope that um, you could see that it's really helpful to have black box tests and that something like Sharness can be very helpful. And that also it's very useful to check that each commit uh, builds and passes the tests. Unfortunately, GitHub, for example, and tools like Travis and so on are not really pushing people in, into doing these kind of things. I think it's a bit unfortunate, but <laughs> that's it. And yeah, use Git Bisect and automate it if you can. Now I need to thank a lot of people. So there are of course, Juno and Linus, and also people from the IPFS community, Juan and Jeremy, and Matthias Lafeld for Sharness. And uh, thank you also to the LinuxCon organizers and attendants. So thank you, everyone. And thanks also to Booking.com, GitLab, and Protocols, Protocol Labs the companies I'm working for. And now if you have questions, no, yeah? So what are the advantages of uh, Sharnas using shell scripts for testing now compared to, let's say, uh, other you know, uh, test frameworks? Um, my opinion is that if you have a, a command line tool, it's very useful because you really test like the user would do it. So, because basically a shell script is like someone using the command line. And also you can use all the, um, all the other Unix tools and pipes and so on. And I think it's, it's much easier a lot of time rather than doing uh, some some kind of pipes uh, in uh, in a programming language or something like that i don't know if you have used something else or no? I, I was just wondering what, what the design yeah. decisions were behind that and uh, well also i don't know if you know it but um, many git commands have been developed as shell scripts so that's why uh, at the beginning, um, um, Juno used shell scripts for that, I think. Because uh, basically, if you wanted to develop Git, you had to know uh, shell scripts as well as C, of course. But at the beginning, there was a really small number of 
core Git commands that were written in C, and most of the other ones were written in shell scripts. And there are still many commands uh, that are shell scripts. Like git bisect itself is uh, half a shell script, half a C code. We are, um, well, there is a, a Google Summer of Code student working on porting, by the way, uh, the, sh git, the git bisect shell script into C code. And I'm monitoring it, him. So, and also, um, yeah, the, there are other commands like um, like git rebase. It's easy to see if you if you go into uh, the git source code and you do this. You can see that git rebase, for example, is a shell script that calls other shell, shell scripts, by the way, and uh, git submodule, for example, and git, git filter branch, which, which explain a bit why, why it's a bit slow. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Are there other questions? Otherwise, you can just uh, ask me. I will be around a bit. Thank thanks again, everyone.